EATX is a bullshit wannabe half specification, not a real form factor, at least not the way it's being treated right now. It doesn't mean anything. The name EATX implies that it's a standard, but it's not a standard at all. It's a freaking free for all. That's not even getting into EEATX, by the way, which, if you didn't know, stands for Enhanced Extended Advanced Technology Extended. The last one's a lowercase e and a capital X because X. That's actually a name. Enhanced Extended Advanced Technology Extended. That's a form factor. Things would be a lot easier for everybody if the motherboard manufacturers, one, would learn what EATX actually means, uh, and two, would stick to the dimensions of SSI EEB without trying to wedge custom stupid form factors in between. Or, you know, if they correctly referred to a 12 inch by 10.5 inch motherboard as SSI CEB, but that require actually trying to follow a spec of some kind. Then case manufacturers, if the motherboard manufacturers actually did their jobs, wouldn't have to write things like EATX up to 11 inches or full size EATX or true EATX, whatever that means, in every spec sheet for normal size mid towers. And customers would, at a glance, know what they're actually getting. We've had a hell of a time lately trying to find cases for our EATX motherboards that actually fit, which range in size from basically ATX to doesn't fit in any case that supports EATX, but it's still called EATX. So we took that frustration and turn it into something positive to dig into this matter. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So other than the technical discussion today, we also get the fun of unrolling acronyms used everywhere in the industry and talking about stupid form factors like XLATX, which have three sizes despite having one name, or uh, again, EATX being split into EATX, true EATX, full size EATX, full EATX, and a whole bunch of other things that don't actually mean anything to anybody. ATX is a spec released by Intel in 1995 to give some historical information here. It's occasionally been updated since then. It stands for Advanced Technology Extended, and it was intended to replace the older de facto AT form factor, a standard published by IBM and the IBM AT PC that was released in 1984. That's where all of this started. It's been used as the industry-wide standard since its introduction, and thus far has been resistant to Intel's attempts to replace it with things, for example, like the BTX form factor motherboards from 2004, or the new ATX 12VO standard that was published in 2019 for PSUs and motherboards. The full ATX and ATX 12 volt spec defines many aspects of both motherboards and power supplies that the manufacturers should adhere to in order to produce something that is uniform and usable across the industry. And it's not just a sizing specification. But the only thing we're concerned about with today is the motherboard form factor and why EATX as a term is a bullshit term for what it thinks it means. There's a place for EATX, but nobody uses it the way it probably should be used. And so it actually means nothing and is completely pointless. Note here that we're going to refer to the motherboard's dimensions based on how they're normally oriented in a case. So the distance from the bottom to the top is height and from the front of the case to the back is width. Distances are written as height by width. We need to go through the fun of defining the acronyms again first. So EATX or E-ATX, if you prefer it's used both ways interchangeably, stands for extended ATX creating the unfortunate acronym of Extended Advanced Technology Extended, which sounds like a bad ad for a product you'd see on a different kind of video website. EATX is defined as 12 inches tall by 13 inches wide, if it's even defined at all, while a standard ATX board is a much more predictable 12 by 9.6 inches. Other companies have occasionally taken it upon themselves to complicate things, such as Supermicro, when it introduced EEATX, or double EATX, 
which obviously everyone knows this, means enhanced extended advanced technology extended. What else could that possibly mean? And then there's XLATX, which has been used by EVGA, Gigabyte, and MSI to describe three nearly identical but not quite the same sizes of motherboards. And let's not forget BTX. Everyone knows, remembers that one, Balanced Technology Extended, a standard that measured 10 and a half by 12.8 inches specifically. And although some parts of it are now laughably outdated, like the recommendation to cool the CPU using only airflow from the power supply, yes, really, the additional PCB space it offered may have sidestepped this entire mess if it had been more widely adopted. As a brief aside relating back to XLATX, although it's not the primary topic today, uh, talking about XLATX, any of the three that exist, take your pick, it's essentially the what if we made it taller too version of ATX, except what if we made it taller too ATX would have been too obvious for what it means, so they named it XLATX, which probably stands, actually it does, ex extra large advanced technology extended, XLATX. So making an ATX board taller makes more room for things like chipset cooling, extra PCIe slots, and things that are primarily useful for multi-GPU setups, which are obviously a lot less popular these days and increasingly rare. That and the increasing popularity of power supply shrouds has mostly rendered the XLATX form factor dead, although there's still a few out there, and it's put a hard limit on motherboard height, meaning that XLATX has no more room to really grow in existing cases, even though it's still being used. Uh, the Gigabyte TRX40 board, I think, is considered XLATX. But mostly this form factor has been supplanted by boards that have increased the width rather than the height, and those boards are known instead as EATX, which is a fairy tale, doesn't exist, and should be disregarded. To underscore how nobody knows what EATX even means, Gigabyte's own X299X Designari motherboard listing has the product marked as, quote, EATX on its official product spec page, but XLATX on its Amazon product page. They don't even know which one it is, and they have the listings for both under their control. Extra width gives more room for things like RAM, multiple CPUs if you're using a dual socket board, although sometimes those are called HBTX, and that's a different thing, and uh, uh, just wider VRMs. And generally, these are more desirable at this point than the extra GPUs are, so you're starting to see more EATX boards, but cases and EATX boards aren't necessarily compatible with each other despite both potentially having EATX support in the spec sheet. Because again, EATX is made up and it doesn't matter. So when a board says it's EATX and a case says it's EATX, that doesn't actually mean anything. Confusingly, the SSI EEB, or Server System Infrastructure Forms Enterprise Electronics Bay, originally known as Entry Level Electronics Bay, is a form factor as an ATX variant that's exactly the same dimensions as full EATX, if we can use that phrase, and shares most of its mounting holes. EEB is interchangeable with SSI EEB as a name for the form factor. The original EEB spec says that the dimensions of this eBay, not that one, are based on the standard AT board dimensions, 12 inches by 13 inches, end quote, and it appears that most of the mounting holes are based on the now 36-year-old form factor as well, although component layout has changed. Version 1.0 of the SSI EEB spec is dated 1999, but the term extended ATX predates this. We spoke to several manufacturers while researching for this piece, and one of them remembered ASUS as the possible origin of EATX as the marketing term through their in-house, now-dead brand, Elan Vital. We checked, and it appears that Elan Vital started calling cases EATX that they had formerly branded AT sometime in 2002 to 2003. The lines are extremely blurred here because AT and EEB are different names for the same size of board as was EATX originally before it was ruined. Now again, if it's not clear, the problem with EATX is that it isn't defined. We've skirted around this so far, but EATX is a blanket term that's slapped on any ATX motherboard that's wider than 9.6 inches. It is not an official specification like ATX is. EATX is used as a marketing term by both motherboard manufacturers and case manufacturers alike to basically signify support for some board that's wider than 9.6 inches, and therefore it won't fit if it's a motherboard in a normal ATX case. Typically, we see the 12 by 13 inch SSI EEB boards referred to with a prefix such as true EATX or full EATX. 
because we needed more distinctions, and motherboard makers can reap what they sow, damn it, and continue to dig their grave deeper by further extending the Advanced Technology Extended acronym as far as they possibly can. The SSI forum defined multiple form factors like the 12 by 10.5 inch compact electronics bay, and EATX is used as a generic term for that as well. This may be EVGA's fault here. As early as 2009, they were referring to the SSI CEB X58 classified as EATX, after which other companies like Gigabyte and Asus followed suit, which has forced case manufacturers to use the phrase EATX compatible to convey that they support motherboards wider than 9.6 inches, but not necessarily, quote, full EATX motherboards. From EVJ's perspective, it was necessary to have a quick way to say that a board wouldn't fit in a normal mid-tower. Silverstone is one of the few holdouts that refuses properly to use EATX to mean anything other than 12 by 13. There isn't an official spec for EATX, just ATX, but both EATX and SSI EEB boards simply add an additional column of screw holes to the three that are present in normal ATX boards. You can check the numbers yourself if you want, but we'll save you some time and confirm that normal SSI EEB hole spacing is exactly the same as normal ATX, plus some extra. Let's repeat that, because it's a point of confusion among case and motherboard manufacturers. SSI EEB is based on ATX and uses exactly the same hole placement with some alternative and extra holes thrown in. Do you understand that, motherboard and case manufacturers? Because we've emailed a whole bunch of you questions in the past couple of weeks, and it seems like almost no one understands this point. Seriously, full or true 13-inch EATX boards are EEB boards. That's what that means. EEB also has options for some extra holes around the PCIe slot and potentially a secondary CPU socket since it's meant for server boards. <laughs> really hope we're getting through here. Note that not all of the SSI EEB holes are required and the ones marked with an apostrophe are alternatives to the legacy ATX locations to allow motherboard manufacturers more freedom in placing components. The alternate holes weren't present in the original spec, and they do not line up with the ATX standard. So if a board manufacturer chooses to use any of them, it limits compatibility with ATX and EATX cases. This is why there's so much conflicting information about whether EATX and EEB are interchangeable. If a manufacturer just uses the primary ATX compatible holes, the board will probably be referred to as EATX, and everything is hunky-dory. If they use an alternate EEB hole placement and call the board SSI EEB, the logical conclusion for a user trying to install a board is that EEB hole spacing is different from EATX. Even boards that refer to themselves as EATX may make use of the alternate EEB hole placements. For example, EVJ's SR3 uses the Y prime mounting hole, which isn't really obviously defined anywhere because who would do that? The SSI forum took care to point out that motherboard manufacturers can skip any mounting holes that they don't want, but cannot add additional ones. It's interesting to see that as of at least 2011, the SSI EEB spec name drops EATX and acknowledges that it's a common name for 12 by 13 boards. And now, thanks to motherboard manufacturers creating and propelling this problem of a whole bunch of different form factors that don't mean anything, the case manufacturers have followed suit because they need to somehow show that they support these various and unmatched form factors and also market themselves against their competitors. And so, it perpetually cycles. Here are the 10 most recent regular consumer cases that we've reviewed and how they describe their maximum motherboard size compatibility verbatim. Fractal Defined 7 says EATX, maximum 285 millimeters. Antec P120 Crystal, EATX, and then if you download the flyer, which no one's gonna do, it says up to 12 by 11 inches. Lian Li Land Coal 2, EATX slash ATX width, under 280 millimeters. <sighs> Pit Phoenix Nova Mesh TG, EATX, up to 272 millimeters. So we've already got 272, 280, and 285, 272 being 10.7 inch, by the way, and then an 11 inch support by Antac P120. Uh, then there's the NZXT H710, EATX with no hyphen this time, because who needs standards, up to 272 millimeters, or 10.7 inches. Fantax P400A, E-ATX, up to 272 millimeters wide, uh, with an asterisk, 
can't use the rubber grommets if you do this. Lian Li O11XL, E-ATX, need to purchase an extension panel for EEB motherboards. Let's just keep mixing them together. Corsair 465 ATX. That's it. That's all it says. Fractal Define S2 Vision. E, no dash ATX, up to 285 mil wide. Corsair 220T. Full-sized ATX. What the fuck does that even mean? Well, it should probably mean 12 by 13. But because it's not actually a thing that's defined in a specification in any official way, they're not really held to any obligation to make that mean 13. It can mean anything. <sighs> Out of those 10 cases, eight of them claim to support EATX, yet not a single one of them, other than the O11XL, can support the full 13 inch or 330 millimeter wide EVJ SR3 and other boards that would be the same size because there's multiple. Even the XL, the O11XL, not to be confused with the XL ATX, officially requires a separately purchased part in order to support 13 inch wide boards. We can't get too mad at the particular case manufacturers because other than Antec, they do all include specific notes about what size EATX board fits. There are EATX boards that are between 9.6 and 13 inches wide like EVGA's 10.9 inch wide X299 Dark, for example. We can get mad, however, at the fact that these notes have to be included at all when you're buying a case, <laughs> rather than just saying the name of a damn form factor. This is stupid. It actually takes more space to type out, quote, EATX up to 11 inches wide than it does to literally just write 12 by 11. Why are we pretending to use form factors that have names at this point? Just type the dimensions. That's all you're doing, except you're putting a four letter code with a hyphen sometimes in front of it that is going to end up confusing users. If it doesn't mean anything, just say the damn dimensions. Then at least the user can look at the dimensions, they can go look at Newegg or Amazon or whatever for their motherboard, they can look at those dimensions, and then it's all plain numbers on does it fit Yes or no. There's no, no mystery involved anymore. The reason these cases aren't compatible with wider boards isn't consistent either. Sometimes cases like the Fractal Define 7 seem like they could easily support much wider boards with some minor adjustments to the rim of the motherboard tray. There are also plenty of cases that have relatively empty space in front of the motherboard tray that's blocked by a cable management channel, like the P120 Crystal. Even if there isn't room for a full set of SSI EEB standoffs, it would be easy for so many cases to allow wider boards to fit and overhang at the front of the case. The elimination of optical and hard drive cages has left this area of cases a no man's land, and wider motherboards would be a great way to fill it in. EATX support is clearly an afterthought in most cases, where chassis are fully designed and then measured after the fact to see if any EATX boards will fit, rather than being designed around 13-inch wide boards from the start. A lot of motherboard manufacturers are at fault here. EVGA in particular is very critically at fault and can be blamed for many of these stupid problems. The reason we've complained about this repeatedly is because we've run into three separate instances where EVGA's boards specifically require a larger than ATX case, but we're not quite sure how large. And when we have to then hunt through our inventory, which by the way has literal dozens of cases, probably more than most users have, we have to check the cases with an actual ruler to see if it'll fit because otherwise, you have to hope that they have it defined in their spec, and they don't always do, the cases that is, or you have to just test fit it in all of the cases, and that takes forever. The EVJ SRX doesn't really count since it uses a unique and ridiculously large 13.6 by 15 inch HPTX form factor, but the X299 Dark and the SR3 are both considered to be EATX and are both troublesome, and they're not alone. The SR3 especially was troublesome though. We eventually gave up and tossed it in a gigantic case that Intel shipped us with the oversized Dominus Extreme ROG board that barely works. And speaking of which, the Dominus Extreme is advertised as being a 14 inch by 14 inch EEB slash ATX form factor. Uh, 14 inch by 14 inch, by the way, ASUS, is neither EEB nor is it ATX. So please stop it. Just sit down and stop. The one thing that everyone can agree on here, even EVGA at least, 
is that ATX, EATX, and EEB have a height of 12 inches. So damn it, Asus, whatever you're trying to do, you need to stop because you're going to screw it all up even more. And then no one's going to know what the hell's going on. The name EATX, again, wrapping all this up, implies a standard. But it's not. It's a free-for-all. Things would be a lot easier for everyone if motherboard manufacturers stuck to the dimensions of SSI EEB without trying to wedge their own damn custom form factors in between, or correctly referred to 12 by 10.5 inch boards as SSI CEB, not EATX. <sighs> then the case manufacturers would have no reason to write things like EATX up to 11 inches, EATX up to 272, up to 285, up to 280, up to 291 millimeters. In every single spec sheet for normal sized mid towers, there's completely different levels of EATX support. And customers would know at a glance for once if people actually followed the SSI CEB, SSI EEB naming, customers would know at a glance what they were getting and if it would all work together. We use open benches for testing, so we'd prefer it if manufacturers made the leap and committed to the true, used properly for once, SSI EEB for anything larger than ATX. But at the end of the day, it's the customer's opinion that matters, and you need to voice to these manufacturers that you've, uh, you also find these terms to be utterly useless and a pain in the ass. So feel free to leave your comments below with what you think about all this. We reached out to a lot of companies for this piece, and we were uh, appalled to see how many of them didn't even understand the contacts, at least, and some of the PMs at these companies didn't understand the difference between these different form factors versus the ones that aren't real form factors. It's just, Asus and EVGA can really be blamed for ruining a lot of this. So thanks, guys. That's it for this one. Subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to support content like this or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.